Welcome to the introduction to TCP IP networking. Networks work correctly because the various devices and software follow the rules. Those rules come in the form of standards and protocols, which are agreements of a particular part of how a network should work. However, the sheer number of standards and protocols available can make it difficult for the average network engineer to think about and work with networks, so the world of networking has used several networking models over time. Networking models define a structure in different categories, layers, of standards and protocols. As new standards and protocols emerge over time, networkers can think of those new details in the context of a working model. Today, TCP IP rules as the most pervasive networking model in use. You can find support for TCP IP on practically every computer operating system in existence today, from mobile phones to mainframe computers. Every network built using Cisco products today supports TCP IP. If you are new to networking like many people are, your perspective about networks might be that of a user of the network, as opposed to the network engineer who builds networks. For some, your view of networking might be based on how you use the internet, from home, using a high-speed internet connection like digital subscriber line, DSL, or cable TV. The top part of the figure shows a typical high-speed cable internet user. Because cable internet services provide service continuously, the user can just sit down at the PC and start sending email, browsing websites, making internet phone calls, and using other tools and applications. The lower part of the figure uses two different technologies. First, the laptop computer uses wireless technology that goes by the name Wireless Local Area Network, Wireless LAN, or Wi-Fi, instead of using an Ethernet cable. Both home-based networks and networks built for use by a company make use of similar networking technologies. The information technology, IT, world refers to a network created by one corporation, or enterprise, for the purpose of allowing its employees to communicate, as an enterprise network. The smaller networks at home, when used for business purposes, often go by the name small office home office, SOHO, networks. Users of enterprise networks have some idea about the enterprise network at their company or school. People realize that they use a network for many tasks. PC users might realize that their PC connects through an Ethernet cable to a matching wall outlet. Some users might not even have a concept of the network at all. Instead, these users just enjoy the functions of the network without caring about how it works or how their favorite device connects to the network. Regardless of how much you already know about how networks work, this video and the related certification help you learn how networks do their job. That job is simply this, moving data from one device to another. A networking model, sometimes also called either a networking architecture or networking blueprint, refers to a comprehensive set of documents. Individually, each document describes one small function required for a network. Collectively, these documents define everything that should happen for a computer network to work. Some documents define a protocol, which is a set of logical rules that devices must follow to communicate. Other documents define some physical requirements for networking such as the voltage and current levels used on a particular cable when transmitting data. The world of computer networking today uses the TCP IP networking model. IBM, the computer company with the largest market share in many markets back in the 1970s and 1980s, published its systems network architecture, SNA networking model in 1974. Other vendors also created their own proprietary networking models. As a result, if your company bought computers from three vendors, network engineers often had to create three different networks based on the networking models created by each company, and then somehow connect those networks. Although vendor-defined proprietary networking models often worked well, having an open, vendor-neutral networking model would aid competition and reduce complexity. The International Organization for Standardization, ISO, took on the task to create such a model, starting as early as the late 1970s, beginning work on what would become known as the Open Systems Interconnection, OSI, networking model. A second, less formal effort to create an open, vendor-neutral, public networking model sprouted forth from a U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, contract. Researchers at various universities volunteered to help further develop the protocols surrounding the original DOD work. These efforts resulted in a competing open networking model called TCP/IP. During the 1990s, companies began adding OSI, TCP/IP, or both to their enterprise networks. However, by the end of the 1990s, TCP/IP had become the common choice, and OSI fell away. 
Here in the 21st century, TCP IP dominates. Proprietary networking models still exist, but they have mostly been discarded in favor of TCP IP. The OSI model, whose development suffered in part because of a slower formal standardization process as compared with TCP IP, never succeeded in the marketplace. And TCP IP, the networking model originally created almost entirely by a bunch of volunteers, has become the most prolific network model ever. The TCP IP model both defines and references a large collection of protocols that allow computers to communicate. To define a protocol, TCP IP uses documents called Requests for Comments, RFC. The TCP IP model also avoids repeating work already done by some other standards body or vendor consortium by simply referring to standards or protocols created by those groups. For example, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, a IEEE, defines Ethernet LANs, the TCP IP model does not define Ethernet in RFCs, but refers to IEEE Ethernet as an option. The TCP IP model creates a set of rules that allows us all to take a computer or mobile device out of the box, plug in all the right cables, turn it on, and connect to and use the network. You can use a web browser to connect to your favorite website, use most any app, and it all works. The vendors that created the hardware and software implemented TCP IP. To help people understand a networking model, each model breaks the functions into a small number of categories called layers. Each layer includes protocols and standards that relate to that category of functions. The TCP IP model shows the more common terms and layers used when people talk about TCP IP today. The bottom layer focuses on how to transmit bits over each individual link. The data link layer focuses on sending data over one type of physical link, for instance, networks use different data link protocols for Ethernet LANs versus wireless LANs. The network layer focuses on delivering data over the entire path from the original sending computer to the final destination computer. And the top two layers focus more on the applications that need to send and receive data. Application protocol HTTP defines how web browsers can pull the contents of a web page from a web server. In short, the application layer provides an interface between software running on a computer and the network itself. Berners-Lee gave HTTP functionality to ask for the contents of web pages, specifically by giving the web browser the ability to request files from the server and giving the server a way to return the content of those files. The full version of most web addresses, also called Uniform Resource Locators, URL, or Universal Resource Identifiers, URI, begins with the letters HTTP, which means that HTTP is used to transfer the web pages. This HTTP header includes the request to get a file. The request typically contains the name of the file, or if no file name is mentioned, the web server assumes the user wants the default web page. The message begins with an HTTP header, with a return code, 200, which means something as simple as OK returned in the header. If you ever looked for a web page that was not found, and then received an HTTP 404 not found error. HTTP transfers the data by sending multiple messages, each with a part of the file. Rather than wasting space by sending repeated HTTP headers that list the same information, these additional messages simply emit the header. Although many TCP IP application layer protocols exist, the TCP IP transport layer includes a smaller number of protocols. The two most commonly used transport layer protocols are the Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and the User Datagram Protocol, UDP. Transport layer protocols provide services to the application layer protocols that reside one layer higher in the TCP IP model. The most important service provided by TCP is error recovery. How does TCP error recovery works? Each layer provides a service to the layer above it, like the error recovery service provided to application layer protocols by TCP. TCP IP needs a mechanism to guarantee delivery of data across a network. The creators of TCP included an error recovery feature. To recover from errors, TCP uses the concept of acknowledgements. The TCP header shows a sequence number, SCQ, with each message. The network has a problem, and the network fails to deliver the TCP message, called a segment, with sequence number 2. Message 2 was lost. That realization by TCP logic causes TCP to send a TCP segment back to the server asking to send message 2 again. Adjacent layer interaction, 
which refers to the concepts of how adjacent layers in a networking model, on the same computer, work together. HTTP, wants error recovery, so it uses the next lower layer protocol, TCP, to perform the service of error recovery. Same layer interaction. When a particular layer on one computer wants to communicate with the same layer on another computer, the two computers use headers to hold the information that they want to communicate. The TCP IP network layer includes a small number of protocols, but only one major protocol is important right now and that is the Internet Protocol, IP. IP provides several features, most importantly, addressing and routing. Each IP address has four numbers, separated by periods. This style of number is called a dotted decimal notation, VDN. Routers are networking devices that connect the parts of the TCP IP network together for the purpose of routing IP packets to the correct destination. Routers do the equivalent of the work done by each post office site, they receive IP packets on various physical interfaces, make decisions based on the IP address included with the packet, and then physically forward the packet out some other network interface. The TCP IP network layer, using the IP protocol, provides a service of forwarding IP packets from one device to another. Any device with an IP address can connect to the TCP IP network and send packets. The term IP host refers to any device, regardless of size or power, that has an IP address and connects to any TCP IP network. Router R1 receives an IP packet, and R1's IP process makes a decision. R1 looks at the destination address, compares that address to its known IP routes, and chooses to forward the packet to the destination router. This process of forwarding the IP packet is called IP routing, or simply routing. When talking and writing about networking, people use segment packet, and frame to refer to the messages. Each term has a specific meaning, referring to the headers, and possibly trailers. Each term, however, refers to a different layer, segment for the transport layer, packet for the network layer, and frame for the link layer. The TCP IP model's data link and physical layers define the protocols and hardware required to deliver data across some physical network. Some standards define both the data link and physical layer functions. The physical layer defines the cabling and energy, electrical signals, that flow over the cables. Some rules and conventions exist when sending data over the cable, However, those rules exist in the data link layer of the TCP IP model. When a host or router's IP process chooses to send an IP packet to another router or host, that host or router then uses link layer details to send that packet to the next host slash router. The following steps illustrate data encapsulation. The client PC creates and encapsulate the data down the TCP IP stack. The IP packet is encapsulated between an Ethernet header and Ethernet trailer creating an Ethernet frame. Physically transmits the bits of this Ethernet frame, using electricity flowing over the Ethernet cabling. The router physically receives the electrical signal over a cable and recreates the same bits by interpreting the meaning of the electrical signals. The router de encapsulates the IP packet from the Ethernet frame by removing and discarding the Ethernet header and trailer. Protocols define both headers and trailers for the same general reason but headers exist at the beginning of the message and trailers exist at the end. The TCP IP physical and data link layers include two distinct functions, respectively, functions related to the physical transmission of the data, plus the protocols and rules that control the use of the physical media. The term encapsulation refers to the process of putting headers, and sometimes trailers. Step 1. Create and encapsulate the application data with any required application layer headers. For example, the HTTP OK message can be returned in an HTTP header, followed by part of the contents of a web page. Step 2. Encapsulate the data supplied by the application layer inside a transport layer header. For end-user applications, a TCP or UDP header is typically used. Step 3. Encapsulate the data supplied by the transport layer inside a network layer IP header. IP defines the IP addresses that uniquely identify each computer. Step 4. Encapsulate the data supplied by the network layer inside a data link layer header and trailer. This layer uses both a header and a trailer. Step 5. Transmit the bits. The physical layer encodes a signal onto the medium to transmit the frame. The OSI model has many similarities to the TCP IP model from a basic conceptual perspective. 
It has layers, and each layer defines a set of typical networking functions. Just as for TCP IP, the OSI committees did not create new protocols or standards, but instead referenced other protocols that were already defined. The IEEE defines Ethernet standards, so the OSI committees did not waste time specifying a new type of Ethernet, it simply referred to the IEEE, Ethernet standards. The OSI model can be used as a standard of comparison to other networking models. Even though the world uses TCP IP today rather than OSI, we tend to use the numbering from the OSI layer. For instance, when referring to an application layer protocol in a TCP IP network, the world still refers to the protocol as a layer 7 protocol. The lower layer encapsulates the higher layer's data behind a header. OSI uses a more generic term to refer to messages, rather than frame, packet, and segment. OSI uses the term protocol data unit, PDU. A PDU represents the bits that include the headers and trailers for that layer, as well as the encapsulated data. This concludes this lesson. Thank you for watching.